Serbia's president, Aleksandr Vucic, has promised to protect the country's minority people in Kosovo if NATO forces fail, he says, to do their job. Nowhere to retreat. We are cornered and so our key message to our population in Kosovo and Metohija is that no matter what happens there will be no columns of refugees, we will save our people from persecution and pogroms. That's if NATO doesn't want to do this or if they participate in pogroms with Albanian units, though I hope they will not. The Serbian leader's words came despite NATO's chief promising to intervene in Kosovo if needed and bolster its forces if needed. Last week's trilateral talks with the EU Foreign Affairs Chief Josep Borrell aimed at normalising ties failed to find any common ground. Already high tensions rose earlier this month when the Kosovan authorities moved to ban Serbian documents and licence plates. We can now cross live to international affairs commentator Marko Gastic for his take. Hi there, Marko. So we've got the Hi. Serbian president promising to step in and protect Serbs in Kosovo if NATO fails to. Are those just words designed to appeal to a home audience or is the situation truly getting dangerous there? Well, it is, it is getting dangerous because the background to it is that uh, in two, uh, at the beginning of this conflict in 1999, or rather when NATO moved in, it saw the eviction or extermination of 220,000 Serbians, Roma and other non-Albanians from this territory. And we had pogroms and persecution in 2004 on NATO's watch when it was committed to protecting uh, people and refugees. NATO did nothing, stood idly by, and more people, more churches, more desecration, more death happened then. So there is a precedent for things to get worse. I think the important thing to bear in mind is that uh, Serbia doesn't really doesn't want to negotiate, doesn't want to fight uh, these Kosovo separatists led by Kuti. It wants to negotiate with them. And if uh, the West got out of the way, then maybe the separatists would be prepared to uh, negotiate back on a, uh, on a level playing field in which we might actually have a chance of some kind of compromise which would uh, help solve this problem. Yeah, that was going to be my second point, Marco. What indeed needs to be done, both in the, the short and long term, to step back from this? Well, the, it, those who need to step, step back are the foreigners, the outsiders, the ones who stirred the pot in the first place, made it uh, impossible to solve, and who are keeping it impossible to solve by supporting one side, that's the Kosovo-Albanian nationalist side, uh, against the other side, which is the state of Serbia. So as long as one side, it's a bit like in Bosnia in the 90s, as long as one side was uh, supported by the US, it had no incentive to have peace until the US decided that peace could break out. And it's the same thing here. Uh, the Kosovo Albanians have no incentive to compromise because the US is allowing them to make uh, uh, demands and no concessions, whereas Serbia is expected to kiss goodbye to the cradle of its own history, culture, uh, and its people uh, in its Kosovo province uh, at the point of a NATO or uh, Kosovo Albanian uh, gun. That's not a fair solution for anybody. And it won't last. Yeah, I I've heard that before, what, what you said there, Marco, making demands and never concessions. That's been labelled at Kosovan authorities. Why does the international community largely ignore the Serbian position and support Kosovo in its separatist aspirations? It it's a theme we see again and again. Well, I, th I think we need to be realistic about what uh, we mean by the international community. Most of the world, the majority of the world, is on Serbia's side on the question of its territorial mm. integrity vis-a-vis -vis its Kosovo province. What we are talking about when we talk about intransigence and uh, refusal for concessions is the NATO side, which bombed its way into Kosovo, created the biggest military base uh, since Vietnam in Kosovo, and has stayed in Kosovo ever since. So the West, and uh, represented by NATO countries, has a vested interest in uh, the Kosovo situation being as it is. And this is primarily Washington, which, because Washington, once it has its base in Kosovo, doesn't need to ask Europe for permission to be there. It's going to be there for as long as it likes. That's the problem. And that is, and as I say, the rest of the world sees this pretty clearly. And, uh, and that's why it supports Serbia in its battle for its own survival and the territorial integrity of its, uh, of its state. Uh, Marco, perhaps on a related theme, perhaps not, but uh, reports came in a few hours ago that Serbia's president announced that his state will stop importing Russian oil um, starting soon. W what does that say, I suppose, about the EU's ability to exert pressure on Belgrade? Well, this is about the EU um, because it's not about uh, President Vucic. He doesn't want to stop uh, importing oil from, from anybody, uh, least of all Russia, which has most of it. 
the point really here is that um, the EU is stopping tankers reach uh, the Adriatic uh, port uh, in Croatia, from which it goes by pipeline to, to Croatia and to Serbia as well. So this is a problem uh, of the EU's making. If the EU wants to make the Balkans uh, the poorest part of Europe uh, even poorer, uh, over this winter and to freeze even more this winter, then it should carry on with this tanker ban because then people can suffer. And if that, if the EU elites are happy with that, then let them carry on imposing this tanker ban. But I think the populations in uh, Croatia as well as Serbia and elsewhere there will feel exceedingly dissatisfied with uh, the European Union if it sees that that's what the European Union is up to. Marco, thanks for delving into that as well for us today. International Affairs commentator Marco Gasic live on RT. Thank you, Ethan.